Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.9.0 and Heatbler Simulations AGS 37 Biggin Module. Welcome to Tutorial 4, Radar. Today we're going to take a look at the operation of the PS37-A Radar. This is the primary sensor fitted to this version of the Viggin. It's originally designed to detect ships at sea, however secondarily it is also capable of ground mapping and air-to-air -air modes. It's a much earlier radar than those you would find on aircraft like the F-18 or F-16. There's not really any processing going on here. The raw radar returns are displayed to the pilot and it's your job to determine what it is you're looking at. You have various controls that allow you to tease details out of these radar images, uh, but at the end of the day, it really is the pilot's job to interpret it. You also have no ability to lock. Uh, this radar does not have single target track in air-to-air, -air, and it also does not have the capability to lock positions on the ground either. So you're only ever using it as a reference, uh, except in, in situations where you're taking a navigational fix. Uh, it is integrated with the uh, uh, TerraNav system the, the uh, navigational system that's part of the CK-37 computer. But that's something we'll cover in a different video. So, let's get started. If we jump into the cockpit, uh, we're mostly interested in the central indicator today. This is going to be our display for the radar. Uh, this is a combination instrument. It's effectively a kind of HSI-like instrument around the outside. You have lights within that for your RWR, and in the very centre is the radar itself. Now, let me cover what the display actually shows you, and then next I will cover the controls for the radar. So I'm going to turn the radar on, I'll explain how that's done later, but for now I'm simply flipping a switch, and we now have uh, a return. And the, the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn down the brightness, because uh, it can be difficult to see some of the details with this default level of brightness. Here on the left-hand console, most of the way near the back, you'll see that you've got a control here labelled Loose Radar. That's just a radar brightness. Uh, we, I'm going to actually adjust the camera so I can see the display and this control at the same time. And I'm going to turn that down quite a bit, uh, because then it will actually be much easier for me to show you what's on this display. So let's focus right down here, and I'm actually going to pause the display here and uh, describe to you what we can see. So, uh, there's a couple of elements that are overlaid over the radar image, just to give you situational awareness. We have this white circle here, which is our currently selected waypoint. In this case, it's waypoint 1. We then have a horizon line and an aircraft reference symbol. These two dashes are basically where the aircraft's nose is pointed. This is the horizon line, with which we can determine uh, whether we're, we're in a roll and how much of a roll we're in. And then we have the altitude reference lines, which are the same ones you would also get on the HUD, and that helps you determine at what altitude you're flying. Next, we have the currently selected range in kilometers. We're currently displaying 60 kilometers on the display, and you can see that we have uh, denotations of, of range uh, going on here as well. Um, the radar can display 120 kilometers, 60, 30, or 15 kilometers. And, um, yeah, we can easily flip through those modes using the HOTAS controls. In fact, if I take us out of pause just now, that's the 120, clunk it down to 30, and 15 is minimum range for the radar. Let's put it back to 60, that gives us a pretty good display, and once again I'm going to pause the radar display here. Uh, you then have the raw radar returns on the screen. Uh, this kind of pale green is no returns, that's basically completely uh, blank areas that the, the radar has not received any energy from. The darker the return you get, the stronger the radar return you're receiving. And different materials will generate uh, different amounts of radar return. And, and through that, you can try to piece together a picture of what it is exactly you're looking at. Now, I can describe to you what we're seeing here. This is actually the terrain, and here there is sea. Um, all of this area here is sea, and then out here is terrain. And the reason that we're not seeing anything beyond this point here is because there's a mountain in the way. So sometimes you have to recognize that uh, you, the reasons why you might not be receiving returns. The sea does not reflect the radar at all, uh, but also if there are areas behind a mountain, for example, you'll get no returns from there either. So a bit of terrain knowledge will definitely help you in deciphering these images. 
So that's the basics of the radar display. There's not really a huge amount going on here. Uh, now let's take a quick look at the controls. Basically, all of the radar controls are here on the left console, centered around the radar stick. So this stick here actually controls the cursor when you have that active. Now note that the cursor is actually only ever used for taking navigational fixes uh, or repositioning target waypoints. It doesn't actually, as I described before, have the ability to lock air-to-air -air targets or to designate points on the ground like modern radars do. So we have this stick, this allows us to control the cursor. Uh, on the very top of the stick is the A0, A1, A2 switch. Now this is probably one of the most important controls that you have, and I'll, I'll demonstrate moving that around just now. So when we have the switch in A0, oh, actually I need to take us out of pause. Uh, in A0, the radar is in standby and the display is powered off. A1 gives us our standard sector PPI display. Now the sector PPI display displays a cone in effect, uh, and so its um, contacts near the bottom of the radar are going to be bunched up, and the ones further away from you are going to be more spread out. If I move the switch all the way to the A2 position, we get what's called a B-scope uh, interpretation, and in B-scope the bottom of the cone uh, that the radar scans through has been stretched out to fill the entire bottom of the display. The other thing to note is these actually denote different scan volumes as well. So if I put it back to the A1 position, this is the one you'll use most of the time, this is called wide mode. And in wide mode, you're scanning 61.5 degrees left and right of the center of the aircraft, and you're displaying this sector PPI display, uh, where it's displaying effectively an, uh, an angular cone of scan volume. If I move it into the A2 position and get the B scope, this is called narrow mode. And in narrow mode, you're only getting 32 degrees left and right of the center, and we get this B scope interpretation. This can be pretty good depending on what it is you're looking for, like perhaps when you're on final attack, you might want to use this mode. Uh, and also when you're in terrain avoidance mode, you might prefer this mode, depending on what it is you're doing. I'm going to put it back to A1 just now, because this is the more classic uh, way of displaying radar returns. So, uh, with that done, let's go and take a look at the other controls we have here. If I move over to the left console, we have a pulse length control. So we have pulse normal or short. Uh, this will control the length of the radar pulses emitted. This might be quite helpful depending on the type of target you're trying to track. So we're currently in short. I'm going to flip it to the normal position. And you'll see that it's it's fairly um, faint, the difference that you get. Uh, however, there is a slight change in the definition of the image. Uh, so you may want to play with that a little bit to see uh, what gives you the best picture. Actually, something that I haven't described so far, and I probably should, uh, you'll notice that we're getting these funny cones of energy here. Uh, and these actually correspond to jamming that's being emitted by different aircraft. So when aircraft are jamming you, you're going to get these cones of energy, uh, and they may actually obscure contacts uh, on the radar. So that's, uh, that's something you need to be aware of. Jamming energy can be problematic. Because of this, the radar actually has an anti-jamming filter. Uh, and we in fact have seven different anti-jamming filters. Using this rotary, you can flip the the, the jamming filters through different modes, and you can see which one gives you the best picture. Some of these filters may cause um, strange returns themselves, so they're, they're not without cost, uh, but you can see that actually one of those center ones I managed to filter out quite a bit with uh, filter number three. Um, this is, oh, and there you see, <laughs> there you see it's all gone horribly wrong. Uh, I've enabled filter four, and basically the entire image is now completely obscured. Also, I don't know how much of this is because I'm in active pause. If I take the aircraft out of active pause, uh, the radar might display a more normal image. Uh, but actually, yeah, you can see quite clearly there that uh, the image is pretty much obliterated there with with uh, filter number four. So in any case, uh, I'm going to pop the filter completely off again, and a normal image should be restored. That's much better. Excellent. Okay, uh, back into active pause, and we'll continue. Uh, so that's the pulse length. We also have passive or active modes. This only works when the radar is in A0. So let's uh, let's flip the radar all the way off to A0. But I can put the, the radar into passive mode by flipping this switch on. In passive mode, it will not dis actually emit anything. You know, as the name 
uh, suggests we are not currently emitting anything, but in passive mode we can see all of those jamming strobes, and this mode would just be used for effectively doing a kind of home on jam style approach. Uh, now of course we can't actually lock anything uh, with this radar, but we can use it for situational awareness, so I could fly towards a jamming target using this passive mode. Could be useful under some circumstances. I now can switch this back to the off position, and then I can flip my radar back to A1, and we'll get the classic representation again. Uh, another really interesting mode, I'll have to move the camera a bit, but another really interesting mode that we have uh, with the radar is uh, logarithmic or linear modes for interpretation. So the default is logarithmic. In logarithmic mode, the strength of the return is plotted across uh, the entire range of return strengths, from kind of 0 to 100, let's say. If I switch the radar to linear mode, in linear mode you don't get any return for kind of the first 50% of the uh, returned energy. This is quite handy because it means that if you have um, quite a lot of detail in the radar image, but there are certain very, very high reflectivity, radar reflectivity that is, contacts that you want to tease out, you can use linear mode and then you can actually use the radar gain control to adjust. Now, radar gain control uh, is actually on the base of the radar control stick, it's right here. It's called radar gain marker, or MKR. I would recommend mapping this to your HOTAS, which I've done so. It's a rotary with a center detent. The center detent is designed to pick up ships on the water. Every other position is really just whatever you need to get the kind of image quality you need. I'm going to recenter the camera just now, and let's focus right down on the image. And I'm going to start turning the marker gain down, and what you'll notice, there we go. So what you will notice is something quite interesting happened. With linear mode and the gain turned down, you'll see that there are these black returns that really jump out at us, uh, along with some voids. These kind of really pale areas are what we call voids. Those are areas where we're not getting any returns at all. So I can tell you that these particular black contacts that we're getting here are large buildings on this airfield might actually be helpful to jump the uh, range down a little bit. So using linear mode, I can more easily tease out these very high reflectivity targets. It can also be very good for picking up vehicles. In fact, this return here, I think, might even be an aircraft on the runway. I'm not 100% sure. So by using linear mode and turning the gain down, we can pick these up. Uh, vehicles in a field, for example, can very easily be picked out this way, and it's quite a strength of the range. Uh, we should then note also these voids. This probably means that something is present here, 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 and here, and it's blocking all of the radar return for everything behind that. Uh, let's go ahead and put the radar back into logarithmic mode, which is the more normal mode, uh, and then we can turn the contrast back up again. So did that work? Mode are we even in now? I'm not sure. So yes, we are back in logarithmic mode. Great. So back in logarithmic mode, we can then turn the contrast, sorry, oh, that's actually my range, we can turn the marker gain back up again, and we should then start to get a more detailed image uh, of this area. Uh, and then I, I've got a detent in the middle that I can tap just to put it back into a more normal mode. Uh, another thing we have is the CI filter. Uh, what this does is it allows us to use the radar at night uh, without affecting our night vision quite as much. I'll roll that back up to get it out of the way. Let's see, do we have any other controls here? Uh, we have uh, the elevation control, radar antenna elevation control is at the very rear of the stick. Uh, when you're doing the normal ground mapping, you don't tend to need to use this. Uh, it, will, it will mostly be automatic, but you can if you would like. Uh, so I'm going to bump it down a few, and you can see that actually we start losing returns, but the radar is scanning more quickly. Let's bump it up a few. And, yeah, there's only there's only a certain range where it's actually contacting the ground and giving us a good return. Uh, that's it, I've managed to find some returns there. Uh, you also have what's called the marker button on the stick. If I click the marker button, it will actually pause the radar. So it will freeze the image on the display, uh, and at this time the radar is actually not emitting. If we want to reset it, we would have to go back to A0 and then back to A1. The radar will reset and start generating an image. Uh, I'm actually going to recenter the elevation control because the CK37 computer most of the time will adjust the elevation for you. 
to get the correct image at the given range. Yeah, I'm actually going to take us out of active pause for a moment and maneuver the aircraft so I can get a slightly better image of the, the terrain here just to demonstrate the kind of detail that you can get out of the system. Of course, as we fly closer and closer to the things we want to see, uh, the image will tend to improve. Uh, there's a kind of maximum range that you can really get a decent image out of this radar. Okay, let's uh, active pause it there again, and we can look back at the image. There you go, you can actually see exactly the coastline here. That's looking actually quite easy to see. Uh, and if I dump it all the way down to 15, mm, actually the elevation is not looking great. We would probably want to climb a little bit to get a better image of the ground here. Uh, but I can fiddle around with the uh, the radar again, try and get the picture I want out of the system. Uh, it's easy to make it kind of wash out if you turn it too high, but there you go. You can see that we're starting to get an image of the ground here. That's working fairly nicely. Uh, so yes, that's the... Uh, I've demonstrated the normal ground mapping. Uh, I've demonstrated uh, putting it into... Uh, the, the kind of pause mode and uh, passive mode as well. What I'll now demonstrate is terrain avoidance mode. Uh, now the radar has, the radar stick in fact, has a push button on the front uh, which is labelled for terrain avoidance and what this does is it locks the radar to the horizon and it gives you radar returns that are designed to make it easier for you to avoid crashing into terrain. Now this is perfect in the event that you're flying at night uh, or in poor weather uh, which is something that the Viggen is very much designed to do. If I go ahead and I hit that switch now, that's it done. And uh, you can see the strong returns on the radar here are showing me basically where there's terrain at the same altitude as my aircraft. So I would then be able to fly just referencing the radar without being able to see out front. So for example, if I wanted to uh, fly through some of this terrain to the front. I would actually probably want to bump the range down a little bit. That's better. Then we get quite a good resolution. Uh, and I, even though I'm heads down, I can reference the, the horizon bar and the aircraft symbol that we've got there and allow myself to fly safely through this terrain, even if I couldn't see out the window. Uh, another thing to note, you've got a red light at the top left of the radar, that's the pull-up warning for when your head's down. So watch as I fly towards the ground, red light, pull up, and I can execute a pull-up and the aircraft is safe again. Uh, and then uh, again I can maneuver in relation to the terrain. If I uh, if I flip the radar back to A0 and then back to A1, then it's back into its normal mode. You could actually press the terrain avoidance mode button again to take it out of terrain avoidance mode. Uh, and that's actually all the controls and all the displays that you have on the PS37-A radar. It's fairly simple to operate. It doesn't do that much. Mostly, as I said, it is for situational awareness. Awareness, sorry. Uh, there are only limited things that you can do with it with regards to defining points on the ground. In future tutorials, I'll demonstrate how you can take a position fix to update your navigational accuracy, and I'll also demonstrate how to move a target point using the radar as well to maintain its accuracy. And very much later on, we'll demonstrate how to use it in air-to-air, -air, because it does in fact have an air-to-air -air mode, although it's a little bit limited, and, and again, only for situational awareness. So, I hope you all enjoyed that. Thank you very much indeed for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. It's a really big help for me and for the channel. Also, if you'd like to further support the channel, you have the option of joining Deep Hack's Ground Crew. Big shout out to those of you who've already done so. Your names are on screen now. Thank you ever so much. There are some small benefits. You get to join Deep Hack's Ground Crew Discord server, and we're also looking at, uh, on occasion, doing flights together. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all next time. Ta-ta.